Okay, so in a previous video I showed you how you could import shapefile data into Blender using the add-on Blender GIS. And in this video I want to show you how you can import CSV or comma separated values data into Blender as well using Python and using Python scripting. So I'm going to be using this data here, I'll put a link in the description. It's the London average air quality levels and I'm going to be using the air quality London time of day. So I'm just going to download that. So this data set has uh, several different columns and it has about a couple of thousand rows. So it's a pretty good amount of data. In the columns here we have the month, we have the time, we have the London mean roadside nitric oxide, the London mean roadside nitrogen dioxide, etc. So heading over to Blender, I'm going to head over to the scripting workspace and I'm going to create a new text data block by pressing this button. I'm going to paste this script into the text editor and I'll put a link to this script in the description so that you can use it as well. And I'll just describe what this script is doing so that you can follow along. So first of all, we have to um, import the Blender Python module, that's import BPY. Um, then we import the CSV module, and this helps us to work with comma separated values. And then we import pathlib, and pathlib is a module which lets us navigate the file structure of where this blend file is located. So what I've done is I've saved my blend file next to the air quality London time of day spreadsheet. And that's what this code is doing here. This is telling Blender where to look for the data. So file lock is the location of this Blender file here. Uh, folder is the location of the folder that the Blender file is in, this folder here. Um, and data, as you can see defined here, is referring to the spreadsheet, which we have saved in the same folder as the Blend file. And the way that this script works is that it references it if it's sitting next to the Blend file. And you can see that's defined there with this string which says air quality london time of day csv and if your data is different you can just rename this bit here to match your spreadsheet so the next line of code is referring to the collection called collection which is up here and using this for loop the script is going to go through and it's just going to clear this out and make sure there are no objects sitting in there before we begin and then we have these three lines of code here, and these are defining three lists, and they are the three domains that we need to construct geometry in Blender. So the first is vertices, that's like points. The second is edges, those are lines that are drawn between the points. And third is faces, and those are the, the faces that get filled in between the edges. And so this is establishing the setup for the geometry and clearing out the collection here and then we can start to read the data from the spreadsheet so this bit here says open up this spreadsheet file as a csv file and then use this function here of the csv module called csv.reader and that reads this file basically and then we have a little line here that says next data reader and what that does is it basically just skips the first line of the spreadsheet so it skips the heading and gets straight to the data and then starts reading that we also create this uh, value here i which goes up each time we run through this loop and so then we get to the loop that reads the data so what this does is it reads every single row in the spreadsheet so it will read all 3000 or so rows and it will do something for each of those rows and what it's doing is in this line here and so you can see it says vertices dot append and what that means is that it's going to append an item to this list called vertices and each item that it appends is going to have three parts first part is going to be i which is currently at zero but will increment up from zero to 3000 so it'll be zero one, two, three, four, etc. until it gets to 3000. The second part of that item will be float value of the third column and that refers to this column in the spreadsheet here, the London mean roadside nitrogen dioxide and so it's going to take that float value and put it as the second part of the item in vertices and finally we have the third part which is the z value and that's going to be set at zero. So basically this is going to go through along the x-axis in 3D space, so along this red axis and it's going to keep iterating that by one each time and then it's going to use the y-axis the green value and it's going to use that to set the height which is determined by the London mean roadside nitrogen dioxide and then you can see after each item in the for loop we increase the value of i by one so we get that incrementation and then so this section here this creates the data for the mesh and then we have to create an object 
that inherits that data. So we define it here, we define new object equals bpy.data.objects.new and then we use the name data graph and we use this new mesh thing that we defined here as the data that the object is inheriting. And then we link that object to this collection here. So then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press the play button at the top of the text editor and that's gonna run this script and you might not see anything straight away because the object it creates is quite large. It's about 3,000 meters, um, which is one meter for each row in the spreadsheet. So I'm going to click on this little tab here in the 3D viewport, and then I'm going to set the clip end to something a bit higher, like 100,000. And then I'm going to collapse this panel on the side here. And you can see that an object has been created in the 3D space. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to this layout tab here at the top so I can see it more clearly. And then I can see this is my data. But what would be nice is if we could draw a line that connected the points up together in sequence. And I've prepared a geometry node tree which you can apply to these points to make them into a line. And that's saved in this file here which I'll also put a link to in the description. Uh, it's called GN Geometry Nodes Data Line. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to link the important bit of that file into this file. So I'm going to go to File, Append, and then I'm going to navigate to my folder with the GN Data Line in. I'm going to double click on GN Data Line. And then I'm going to go to this folder here, Node Tree. And then inside Node Tree, I'm going to select Create Data Graph. And that's going to link that geometry node tree into my Blender file. So then what I can do is I can select my points and I can go over to the modifiers tab here, which is the little wrench icon. And then I can create a new geometry nodes node tree. And then currently it's just got an empty container. But if I go to this drop down menu here, I can select create data graph. I've got two versions because I made one earlier, but if I select create data graph, which is the one I just imported, you can see that the points turn into a line and you can also see that the line has stopped here. And that's because we have this little controller that we can use, which sets the end point of the line. So what this is doing is it's basically going through all of those points and it is saying beyond a certain point, don't show the points anymore. And then there's also another little uh, tool which I made. And if I go back to that file append option, and then if you've just done it, you should still have the, the data structure of this GN data line file open. There's also one here called read value. And if I append that to my file, and then I add another geometry nodes node tree to this object, and then choose the F4 read value. Again, I've got two copies because I made one earlier. You can see that it gives us this little bit of text here. Um, and in order to actually use this, we just need to connect a few little attributes. So if I go to this second geometry nodes node tree here and go to internal dependencies, you can see that it has this dependency called end, and that's just a variable that I've put into this one here. So if I go to the output attributes of this node, um, I can just type end here. Um, and then you should see that the text here gives a reading. It gives 54.2. And that should be the reading, the value at the end of the graph. So if I roll this back a little bit, and we should see that the fluctuations in height change with that value there. And yeah, it seems to be following the variations in height. So this is how you can turn those points into a line and then how you can read the value at the end of the line. And that's how you import CSV data into Blender. So just for fun, I was inspired by this Joy Division album cover for Unknown Pleasures. And I made a little node tree which will create a similar effect to this. So if you go to File, Append, and then go to the data line file and click on data line. You can go to node tree and append the joy division graph. And what that will do is it will um, give you a node tree that you can load onto your object called the joy division graph. And that will stack the data into a couple of rows. And then if you enable the shaded mode, um, you can see that it creates this kind of uh, Joy Division style album cover for the um, data. And it also has a little um, controller here which you can use to read the value of the data at a certain point. So hope you enjoy.